Everybody's not built like a tank. Do you guys know this? Everybody, just like everybody, is not built for combat. No matter how tough they may sound, no matter how tough they may look, not everybody is meant for conflict. Everybody is not built for it. When a person is exposed to individuals who are, you know, kind of ready to rip your head off, it seems, they can become frightened, can impede their lives. These guys have families. They become nervous about their families. Now, if you were in leadership on the Republican side and you openly voiced your skepticism of what the rest of your colleagues were saying regarding the election, you know what would happen? You would go home and you would be harassed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and your children would be harassed and your spouse would be harassed and you would receive death threats all the time. Could you live with that? Could you live with the idea knowing that somebody can act in violence against your children because of you, because of your position? Could you live with yourself knowing that your spouse could be injured or harmed because of your position? See, it's one thing when somebody wants to harm you directly. It's a whole different matter when they start involving those you love. And when they do that, well, it changes everything. Some people have switched their positions for that very reason. They're not going to have their family harmed because they openly speak against something that everybody else is in agreement with or vice versa. They're not going to do that. And so they change their positions. Do you guys understand that? That can be a very daunting thing to live with. Some people who come from certain places overseas have bounties over their heads. If their face is ever known, there are folks over here in the U.S. that will destroy their families, and it already has happened. Can you imagine going on a mission, and you come back home, and one of your children are chopped up because of that bounty? Imagine that one. Imagine knowing that you would harm more people than you would help simply because of your public stance. This is why God gives us advice concerning our public stance. We can stand for the Messiah, but when it comes to the kingdoms of men, you better not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And you do not need to share too much. You don't do that, not with the kingdoms of men. In these things that man makes, everything is influenced not by the holy of holies, but by men's admirations, by their lusts, what they want, what they want to achieve. And you don't know what you're pledging your lines to when you do that. Why do you think the Lord said, see she from man whose breath is in the loins? Hmm? See, there's some things you keep to yourself. There are certain things you don't brag about. Because as sure as you're born, if you brag about one half of man's kingdoms, the other half is going to seek to kill you. And if you flop sides, they're going to flop sides. It's a no-win scenario. That's why the Lord tells us to stand for righteousness. Now, if you're in the kingdoms of men and you stand for righteousness, here's the truth. No one is coming to kill your family. That's a fact. People will come and get other folks by what they agree with concerning men. Do you guys understand that? If a person in, 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 in Congress right now stood for righteousness, for righteousness, and people knew they were loyal to righteousness. They're not going to come and get them, and they never have. In every single case, people have been killed, certainly in this country, taken out. You know why? Because they agreed with the wrong people. Not because they agreed with the Most High. 
they've been killed, they've been harassed because they agreed with the wrong people, not because they agreed with the Most High. Even the Lord told us this. You're blessed if you're persecuted for his name's sake, but that's very different than being persecuted for your own sake. If you take an active stance with somebody's uh, uh, organization or something like that, and you're persecuted for that, that has nothing to do with the most time. The Bible also tells us, do not provoke your children to wrath. Don't you think we shouldn't do that to other people either? As representatives of the kingdom of God, we stand for what's righteous. Correct? Not promote, not becoming a, a Don King of politics, which is to say to promote somebody. You can agree with righteousness. We are to agree with righteousness. To lift up the name of the Lord, which is righteousness. But when it comes to these things of men, didn't the Lord say, withdraw yourself? That's what I read in my Bible. He said, withdraw yourselves. Now, there are some who are still in this world that will eventually be in the kingdom, and they have not withdrawn themselves, and they're going to learn lessons here and there. They're going to learn about the wickedness of the flesh. You can be up one day, down the next. People will love you one day, one day and hate you the next. They will embrace you one day and push you aside the next. They'll look up to you one day and be disgusted by you the next. Man's heart is always changing based upon what man wants. Our Father never changes. We can trust him with that. But do you understand now why some of these people are changing their positions? They don't want to bring harm on the family. They don't know how to handle that situation. They don't. And it becomes a pretty bad situation. Right? If a person would do anything to keep his family protected, then a salute to that guy. To stand there in front of the world to be ridiculed for swapping sides, but keeping your family in somewhat a secured and peaceful location, then a salute to that guy. Now, that's that situation. So you guys see that unfolding today. You see it unfolding today. Hmm? These are issues of men. This is why when you start thinking about it, it's almost like you can't find a true solution in your heart. You can't do that. You can't do it. But, nevertheless, there it is. In our case, right? In our case, we can see what's right and what's good and what is not. Pray that the Lord's way be established in these things. Not man's way, but the Lord's way. I find myself doing that all the time. I don't pray that what I, you know, when I see a situation unfolding, let's just say I had the perfect solution for it. I would never pray that they do what I think they should do. I never pray like that. I always pray that the Lord have his way, that his solution, that somehow he grant mercy upon them so they can see his solution. I never pray that my way happen in anything. My way may be good today. It may blow up tomorrow. Hmm? My perfect resolve may work for a month and may destroy things the month after. But if we pray that the Lord's will be established and, and, and go in the Bible and seek to understand what his will is, because I want you to ask yourself this one question. What does the Lord want the outcome to be? Ask yourself that. Don't ask yourself what should the outcome be. Ask yourself what does the Lord desire the outcome to be? 
I, I, I can tell you that most people don't have an answer to that question. I'm talking about Christians. They do not have an answer to that question. Because all too often we find ourselves preoccupied with attempting to have our way established in the earth. Mm -hmm. But ask yourselves, what would the Lord desire the outcome of this situation to be? I'll tell you right now, even through the mess that you see, the Lord is working. Oh, yes, he is. He's working. Who do you think permitted this in the first place? He's working. And for this country to be so polarized, you better believe he's working. And, and, and for it to be so extreme, you better believe it's for an extreme cause. You better believe it. Because everything in the Bible, right, that has happened that's been extreme, I've noticed that it happens right before the Lord comes and reclaims a great many people. These things we see in the earth that are escalating all the way around, and I'm telling you right now, as I said the other day, as men continue to seek and, and cause this confusion in the earth and rebel against righteousness, so will the earth respond in kind. Have you been tracking natural disasters in the earth, and what have you seen, and where did you see it? That's, that's pretty bold for somebody to say that, right? But see, I trust the word of the Lord. I'm not sitting back saying, oh, I hope, you know, I hope it increases so I won't look like an idiot. I don't do things like that. No, if the Lord said it, I believe it. And he often lets me see that work so I can boldly proclaim things that most people back away from because they don't want to look stupid in front of other people. I don't care about looking stupid. I know the Lord's word is true. I know I'm not true. I'm not the right one here. The Lord's word is right. And if the Lord said that the incidences in the earth would increase as man's iniquity increases, then that's precisely what it's going to do. If he said, if a place does not turn back to him, then woes will come upon that place, then that's what I'm going to say. And that's what you see. That helps a believer to understand what's really happening. These are very deceitful days. And what men, listen, what men are calling good, I will never call good. If a bunch of people start calling something good, I'm backing away from it. Because I read something the opposite from Christ. The world wants nothing to do with the light. So if the world agrees with it, how can it be righteous? I'm getting away from it. That's why the Lord said we live in a time when men call good evil and evil good. Think about that. That makes you not really trust the ambitions of men, and I do not. See, any work of holiness has a shadow and a trail and residue of holiness. Any work of iniquity leaves destruction, confusion, and chaos in its wake. It's very simple. God's way is life. Man's way is death. When death works, death is in the shadow of it. When life works, life is in the shadow of it. Righteous works heal people. There's healing. There's restoration, reconciliation in the path of righteousness. There's brokenness and despair and death in the path of darkness. You can tell what something is by its fruit. The Lord told us this principle. You'll know a tree by its fruit. That means you'll not know it any other way. You're not going to know it by seeing it. You're going to know it by what it yields. And what it yields is not what it says itself. What it yields is what it leaves in its wake. You'll know a tree by its fruit. You can understand a person by their conversation, by what the conversation causes in other people. You ever get around a person, and when they start talking, it feels like somebody's sucking the life out of you? You patiently hear the conversation, but it just feels like death. And then all of a sudden you start thinking these disparaging thoughts. 
You're not so positive, but greatly negative. Right? That's the fruit of that conversation. That's what it yields. Had it been a conversation of life, you would have begun to think by way of life. You would have hope. Every holy conversation produces hope. Every unholy conversation leads to death. You'll know a tree by its fruit. A lot of people don't, they, they don't quite comprehend what the fruit of something is. Even with a fruit tree, what comes first, the fruit or the tree? The tree does. The last thing a fruit tree produces is fruit. Isn't that funny? The fruit can be consumed. That's what the fruit is. The fruit is what can be consumed. Remember that. In a conversation, you consume the fruit of a conversation. And it will leave a bad taste in your mouth or a good one. When you're around other people, their whole conversation, how they act, what they're doing, you consume how they act. You consume what they're doing. You consume this. And if it causes you bitterness, then what do you think the tree was? If it causes you to get angry, then what do you think the tree was? But if it grants to you life and hope in Christ... What do you think the tree was? The fruit is what you consume. In this world, you consume many things. Information is consumption. But whose report will you believe? Hmm? Any fruit of the Lord is perfect fruit. It is wholesome in all ways. It is good. And it yields hope in Christ. And that hope makes us not ashamed. Those who work by life and hope do nothing by force. They are mannerable, considerate. They never do anything by force. Everything they do is by invitation. Nothing is by force. Remember that also. Jesus does not work by force. He works by what? Invitation. The gospel is not by force. The gospel works by what? Invitation. God, the creator of all things, does not force you to become righteous. It is an invitation. But Satan, who beguiles, he forces you to believe lies. He forces people to act in certain ways, causing them to be desperate, forcing them to do a great many things, but not our father. No one goes to heaven because they're forced to go there. It's by invitation. And with an invitation, you can take it or not. That's your choice. Our Father works in the ways of freedom and liberty. Hallelujah. He does not use all this other stuff. He doesn't. Even the demons would request of him things, didn't they? Because that's how he worked. He didn't use tools of darkness to eject darkness. That's not what he did. He did what he did by the principles set forth by his father, which are not by force. To eject evil out of somebody is to restore, to reconcile. Do you know that? Huh? Listen, I'm going to give you a key here, something that is real. I know in this world you've watched entertainment about devils and demons and everything else. But let me share this with you. A demon cannot survive in a vessel that's been reconciled. Hallelujah. It cannot. It cannot 
survive in a vessel that's been reconciled. It cannot. <laughs> can't do it. You have people out there, they're getting angry at demons and everything else. Hey, you're going to learn about that soon enough. That's tricking you. It's fooling you. It's really fooling you. Because if you had a person and you said, you know what, with the demon inside the person, and that person be reconciled, death cannot stay with it. Did you know that all demons are a portion of death? And death has no portion with life. Did you know that all demons are part of darkness and darkness cannot fellowship with light? It cannot fellowship with life. It can't. Just as death has no portion with life itself, darkness and light, they don't stick together. Division and reconciliation cannot work at the same time. Our Father works in a different way. And see, in the Bible, it says there's a way that seems right unto man, which means it appeals to your logical mind, your senses. It appeals to your logical mind and senses and common sense, but it's, that doesn't make it right. It seems like it would be logical to, by your strength of anger, cast out a demon and do this, that, the other. Really? The demons were scared to death of Jesus, saying, what have, thee, what, have, what have we to do with thee, thou son of man? What are you going to do with us? Have you come to, have you come to, to do what you got to do with us before the time? Jesus said, be quiet. <laughs> That's what he said, be quiet. You're loud. Be quiet. Oh, please, let us go jump into these pigs. I thought that they were begging Jesus to go jump into some pigs and die that way. I think they did. <laughs> that term cast out seems like it's a forceful thing, doesn't it? But Jesus explained what casting out is. It's just that it's not studied too much. It's something that we're going to study. It's in the book of Acts about casting something out. And when you cast something out, it's not a forceful action. That's not what it is. To cast something out is to restore something that's been lost. See, when a house is empty, something's going to occupy it. When a demon is ejected, when it's been cleansed, it does that by way of an agreement the person has. And that house must be filled. That's the beginnings of reconciliation. Because who removes a demon from a person? Is it a person? Does a person remove a demon? No. No. The demon is removed by whose authority? God's authority. But God's authority is already established. So what's really happening? Men, some certain people would have you believe that it's by your power they are removed. No, it isn't. It's not by man's power. So if it's not by man's power, then breaking a sweat is not going to do the trick, is it? No, it's by God's authority. And if it's by God's authority, and God watches over his word to perform it, and he gave us a command, he gave certain people a command to cast out demons, how were they doing it? They were to do it in the name of Jesus, in the stead of Jesus, so how were they doing it? How did they do it? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same way Jesus healed. The same way he healed. And he said, go, your sins are forgiven you. What? That's right. He said, your sins are forgiven you. When a person turns to Jesus Christ, when they say yes to the Messiah, evil cannot stay. Do 
Jesus said, if a house is swept clean, if a demon is cast down and that person is not filled, their in condition is going to be worse than the first because that demon will go out and find seven more worse than it is and the person's in condition is going to be worse than the first. So we know that to cast out a demon without filling a person up is killing that person. And the Lord will never sanction such a thing. He's not going to sanction somebody to cast out a demon and them not be filled to die worse in a worse condition than they began with. He's not going to sanction that. So, but what does he sanction? For us to go spread the gospel, to leave our blessings with those who accept it, to wipe the dust off of our feet of those who reject it. How simple a task. It's a task. It's not us wielding any power. We don't wield God's power. God works through us. That's why we're called ambassadors. And believe me, it's real. Don't worry. You'll see lots of demonstrations. Because the fakery will be exposed. Because it's going to backfire on all those who partook of it. Those demons didn't really go anywhere. That's what people are going to find out. But they became complacent, plaguing those who had anything to do with them. And they still have to be cast out. That's what you're going to see. All those who played with these dark forces, they're going to pay a penalty. Because you don't play around with God's authority. And you don't teach others to play around with his authority either. That's one of the spiritual things that will be exposed that will set millions free. When they stop believing in these weird things that man has conjured up as though it's effective. And that season is coming quickly. At any rate, there's a big difference between those, the fruit of our Father and the fruit of this world in it. Take note of it. Take note of all of it. 